going on, y'all? It's Damian Washington here with MS Views and News, MS Views Now. We're just working on building community and uh, working on decreasing the feelings of isolation that come along with multiple sclerosis. You know what I'm talking about. And right now, I have another fabulous MSer with me to talk and just kick Brittany Quiroz. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I practiced that many times before. I might have still messed it up. Did I mess it up, Brittany? It's okay, I'll forgive you. <laughs> Brittany runs a blog. Brittany is a fabulous singer. And this vlog is about multiple sclerosis because she was recently diagnosed. She is the what they what she calls herself a hot MS. Girl, use a hot MS. Get it together. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> so thank you for coming on and talking with me for thank a little bit. Thank you talking, so much for having me, Damien. Talking with everyone else here, because that's kind of what this is about. So yeah. hey, you're on an MS journey. You just started your MS journey. Talk to Thanks. me about it. Tell us. So I was diagnosed in September of last year, 2019. It's funny, I had kind of known for the past three, four years prior that something was totally wrong with my body. But again, you get older, you're busy, you have stressors in life. You just say to yourself, oh, that's what bodies do. So ah, I'm fine. Oh, no, no, no. That's, that's stress. Yeah, I'm fine. That's you know, having whiplash at work, yeah, I'm fine. And then all of a sudden your left leg just stops working and you go, all right, maybe I got to check into this. <laughs> wow. And so you checked into it. And did you get diagnosed with one thing and then another? And then no, you know, it was funny. I have heard so many horror stories about people um, and their process of diagnosis and going, you know, trying to basically convince um, their doctors and being an advocate for themselves saying, no, no, something's wrong, something's wrong. I was diagnosed in under three weeks. It was really, really fast. Um, so I had initially gone to my primary care doctor and he did all the in-office testing and everything and said, you know what, I think you should see a neurologist. And I'm like, okay, well, I had fallen down the stairs really, really bad, hit my tailbone. I wasn't holding on to anything. It was like, okay, I'm about to die. <laughs> um, it was that bad of a fall. And I figured, okay, slip disc, you know, something sciatic. So he sent me to a neurologist. Um, they did MRIs uh, with and without contrast. And it's a baby. It was an MS baby. So it was, it happened really, really fast. It was uh, overwhelming, daunting, terrifying, whiplashy, and I ugly cried for probably a month, like contorted face. <laughs> I just ugly cried right before we got on, just so you know, because <laughs> uh, this is whack. But uh, what are you going to do? Exactly. Uh, so you, you got the diagnosis, you did the ugly cry, but the BQ in you was like, I'm going to make a website. <laughs> it's funny when I like I know exactly like I know very little about or knew very little about social media. I think I learned what a hashtag was like a year ago. To me, it's like okay, it's either a musical symbol or it's a pound sign. <laughs> you know, it's a sharp. Um, so, it's a sharp. Yo, yeah. you're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So I, when I started the blog and I started the website, I think it was more in the beginning for um, self-acceptance and self-healing. And okay, if I put it out there, basically, if you talk about it more, you have to accept it more. It's like walking up to saying, you know, meeting someone saying, hi, I'm Brittany, I have MS. It's like, that makes yeah. it more real, you know, and that's totally like psychopath stuff. Like who does that? But for me in the beginning, the more I talked about what I was going through and the more I talked to other people about what they were going through, it made it more real and allowed me to accept it more and process it more. Um, my dad also has primary progressive. He's had it for seven years now. He's in Boston, Massachusetts. So I definitely had somebody that I could go to as far as, you know, another personal experience. But again, snowflake disease, baby. Nobody's the same. Yeah. So. No dad's MS is not yo MS. Right, exactly. Right? Yep. So I would say in the past eight months, you turned this blog, A Hot MS, um, into this voice for the community and helping I'm other people get heard, why, which is why you are on this right now, because you, you, I heard about you. 
you was a hot MF. <laughs> it's so funny. Look, so coming back to the name, um, I've always viewed myself as a hot mess. It's like, you know, you you have your ugly days, but put on a glitter dress, put on a, you know, bun up and put your lips on and some lashes and you're gonna make it rock and you know work it anyways. So when I came up with the name, I'm like a hot mess, a hot MS, a hot M ha. Yeah. A ha. <laughs> and I'll tell you what. I never in a million years thought that I would be connecting with so many incredible, strong-willed, warrior, bad, beep people of the world. Never in a million years. I have connected with so many people. I cannot believe that I'm, you know, having an impact and having that voice. Um, I come from a musical background, so music has always been my form of therapy. Um, and now oh, motivation. No, I'm cutting her off because she could she really could blow. She got them pipes. Trust me. Thank you. Thank you. No, I I um I've been writing music for a really, really long time. And I think when I was diagnosed, it it's gonna sound really weird. It it was I'm Christian as well, so I'm 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 a believer, amen. And I really felt in my heart that there was a reason why I was diagnosed. And it was a gift. And I still feel like that. Um, Monday of this week, I lost complete feeling from my knee down in my leg. And if someone came to me and gave me the option to take away my multiple sclerosis, I would tell them, no, this is my purpose. This is what I'm supposed to speak to people about. This is what I'm supposed to share my story about, write more motivational music about, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Does it suck at times? Oh, my God. So bad. <laughs> Most you know? of the time. Yeah, but you know, it's I feel like I have an indicative purpose of what my goal on this earth is now. So I wouldn't change it for the world. Mm. You know, it's funny. Richard Pryor and now you, I've heard other people say it, I cannot name them right now, has described MS as a gift. I wouldn't quite describe it that way. However, you do pay attention to yourself more to how you eat, yeah. to what you're putting out, to what you are learning about, to how you are come off to others. And you not most certainly would not have done that in this strong, dynamic way without the, the disease. Absolutely. So, I'm as, healthier now oh, than when I was before. I'm so healthier so, now. But you eat differently. You exercise. Like, yeah. you chill. You're like, no. I'm not doing nothing for the next half hour, bye. And right. I'm supposed to. No, that's something that only comes with disease, Brittany. Right. And, uh, Absolutely. I agree. As, as far as I see. And you have been able to turn this gift. I mean, it's it's a poop wrapped up. It's going, here. Here. And so you've been like, Make it oh, work. Thank you. <laughs> and you've opened it up and you're like, oh, it's a big poop. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to love it. Exactly. Life. You know, it's all it's about life. perception. I constantly preach on my blog, um, on my blogs and my videos on my Instagram perception. You can make a situation as awful it may seem and turn it into something that's not only going to heal you and bring positivity to your life, but it's also uplift and inspire and empower others. You know, you can look at, okay, it's pouring rain out and it's lightning and there's a house on fire down the street. What are the positives in this situation? And I know that sounds totally like sociopathic. Like, how could you even think that there's a positive somewhere in there? But Flat when you start connecting, yes, absolutely. I, yeah, nothing is coincidental. Everything happens for a reason. 100%. I am like such a strong believer of that. So you have this blog going, oh, excuse me, this blog. Now you've just been posting and posting. That following, it seems to be growing, yeah? Talk to me more yeah, about that. Yeah, it, it is. Um, again, when I started blogging, I, I've got the fastest phalanges in the West. I think I'm like 98 words per minute. So once I go, I'm like, nah, 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 I can't stop. Um, but it's really turned into, um, from the beginning, I started with, just being really real. I am East Coast Italian and a Scorpio. I don't have a filter. I tend to be very authentic. I'll take like a toilet selfie and not have any shame at all. Yeah. You know, Girl, so. Um, East Coast Scorpio. 
filter. You don't got no filter at all. No, I know. So I found that um, being authentic and saying the things that I know others are thinking, but saying them, it's giving more validation to those people that have that moment of, oh my gosh, I know exactly what she's talking about. That's what I'm going through. And I get those messages. I get those messages saying, thank you for being real. Thank you for being authentic. You have a, a humorous way. And I'll be honest, humor is my coping mechanism. Um, when, you know, poop hits the fan and stuff's really uncomfortable, I am joking like I'm on Comedy Central or at stand up somewhere. Um, and, you know, it's like you have to learn to laugh at yourself because if you don't, okay, yeah, my left side is junk. I can't feel from my knee down and I walk probably looking like I'm trashed out of my mind. And it's like, you have to laugh because when you're not, then it gets dark and then it gets depressing and then it gets, woe is me. And, oh, I feel sorry for myself. It's like, I walk with extra swag and that's cool. <laughs> wow. You was out here putting the silver lining on everything. Just <laughs> eat it up. So like you, you've had this vlog, this vlog of going, Right, and so you you had people messaging you like, how has this been a gift to you, even more than the MS? Absolutely. Um, I think knowing that it, it's like it's a validation on two different two different spectrums. So it's validating for me to know that my voice is reaching other people, not to making me sort of speak know that I'm not alone that, oh my gosh, I'm not crazy. Because I may look like I have it put together, you know, my bun's tight, my makeup's lit and everything, but I'm a disaster right now. It's been an emotional week. I've ugly yeah. cried. My husband's had to buy me flowers three times and there was definitely chocolate involved. Last night I had a pizza and some dino nugs to just wash away my sorrow with some junk food. So I slip, yes, I mess they're, up, they're I'm are, human. There are seven, oh, good, no, we're talking over each other because we're two um, extroverts. <laughs> All I was gonna say is that there's seven days in a week and she got flowers three times. <laughs> so her husband loves her and she was in a pretty bad place. Yeah, it got ugly. But um, knowing that when I do have people connect with me that they're going through the exact same thing or something similar is like, okay, I feel like I'm not losing my mind. And then it kind of checks me. It checks me of saying, okay, Britt, stop feeling bad for yourself this week. How can you help them? So I'm offering, you know, holistic advice. And I'm not a medical professional. I'm still learning myself. But I'm offering, you know, advice for what's working for me. And then I'll get messages back from my followers saying, oh, my gosh, I tried this and it worked. And it's like that was in itself is such a rewarding thing um, that it's like it's so powerful. It's such a beautiful thing to have that community. And especially with my motivational music. Um, I have gotten very biographical with my music writing and I figure, okay, if I can write a song, music is so healing. I'm so in belief that music can heal and music is powerful and it's universal. It doesn't matter what language it's in. Everyone can understand it um, because it has passion and feeling and emotion and vulnerability. So, um, you know, having dove deeper into my motivational music and putting that out there and putting, you know, things that we're all thinking into a song and then that song is helping someone. It's like, that's, that's what it's all about. Like that's gold. You have been recently diagnosed. What would you tell someone who has been recently diagnosed? Cause I get a lot of those messages and I know you do as well. What what how, what do you tell someone who's like, uh, I got this junk and it's whack and I'm gonna have it for the rest of my life? Help me, please. I know, huh? It's funny. I've actually had three different people reach out to me on my Instagram this week that were diagnosed within um, the past two weeks to three weeks max. Um, and I know as like you know, as a motivational singer and songwriter and motivational speaker and blogger, you want to hear oh everything's gonna be fine it's like i'm not even gonna sell that junk because it, it is it's junk i tell them off the bat ugly cry you're allowed to feel it's an adjustment don't let anybody tell you that you're not allowed to ugly cry to be depressed for a couple of weeks and to feel sorry for yourself these are normal human emotions when they're going through a trauma and 
The second we feel like we can't do that, what do we do? We bottle it up. We bottle it up. We eat a Snickers. We eat another Snickers. <laughs> That's what I used to do. I, years ago, I was like That's 205. Mama. <laughs> like I was, mama was big. I was a big girl. Not healthy for my body. Um, and, you know, it's like they have to realize that it's okay to have emotional whiplash. And do not let anybody fault you for that because everybody handles trauma and a life-changing alteration differently. Some people are gonna get recluse. Some people are gonna write about it. Some people are gonna spray paint it on a building. I don't know, please don't do that. That would be vandalism. But what I'm saying is everybody's different. So everybody grieves differently. And when I was first diagnosed, it honestly felt like a breakup. That, that was the best way I could describe it to anyone was that it felt like a breakup with somebody that I knew years ago that I probably won't see again. But in retrospect, again, it's about changing your perspective. It was validation to know that all the years that I knew something was wrong, it all made sense. So go through the emotions, ugly cry, eat a Snickers bar, and then when you're done, reel it in, make a list of what you have as far as goals for yourself, goals for your health, educate yourself, join, join in support groups, get online, talk to people, talk to your community, find other fellow warriors. On my Instagram, I have found so many people literally within a 20 mile radius of my house in Orange County, California. Who does that? Right, and they're, and they're your homies and they're your friends and you connect with them yeah. on another level because even if you don't share the same symptoms, you're fighting the same thing. And there's a, a connection that comes with that. There's a shared space that comes with that. So yeah. thank you for putting into your own shared space and making your own um, and watching it grow and with love and information and uh, presence. So that's what you're doing. And may I'm just talking, I'm talking here, maybe is what I'm doing. I think when you're so close to it, like a me, like a you, you're like, no, I'm just, I'm just being me. This thing is horrible. So I right. gotta talk to somebody. <laughs> You know, exactly. um, but reaching out to your community is number one, I would say. Matter of fact, give me some tips, BQ. If you just got diagnosed and you're like, you reading the MRI printout, like possible multiple sclerosis. Wait, what? And then you go to the neurologist and they're like, yeah, bro, you got MS. So you got your ABC drugs, you got your new infusion. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're giving me drugs now? Bro, right. for what? Chill. Oh, you mean that thing that the machine said that I have? The very horrible thing, the crippling, um, uh, your former self changing thing? I got that? Ugh. So in that, for me, reaching out to the community and creating a community, has been something to help me cope with that. It's certainly something that's helped you. Like, Absolutely. what else? What, what else would you would you say to somebody? Or like, is this diet? Is this exercise? Like, is this a heart thing? Like, talk to me more. So yeah, great. Rely on your community. Great. And yeah. So I would say um, I started me personally, and again, everybody's different. But me personally, I got online and I started to research. However, I started to go down the Google rabbit hole of WebMD telling me that I was dying. So set a limit, know yeah, your limit. I'm in, I'm in the Google rabbit hole right now. <laughs> oh, it's like, it's such a blessing and a curse. Cause then it's like, oh my gosh, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, maybe I'm dying. Um, but go to the basics. Okay, you know what MS is, or you're learning about what MS is, inflammatory, right? Start to try implementing an anti-inflammatory diet. Stress. It's like kryptonite, limit stress. And I am still struggling with this. I have my first acupuncture appointment this afternoon. We'll see if that works. <laughs> no, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be like, oh, why did I not do this I know, before? and I have a needle phobia. Yes, the tattooed girl is terrified of needles. Sounds totally crazy. Um, but what? I would say, you know, it's like, I know, it's so funny. How? People don't, huh? That's a thing, and I'm like, yes, that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so good on you. I'm only speaking on that because 
part of what the disease does is make you look through and look past the things that you're afraid of because you know your wellness is on the other side. Right. Yeah, I don't want to own, to cut out bread and cut out you know more than eight ounces of meat a day, but my wellness is in there, and I want to be well. Where did you go? Right. Oh, there we oh, go. Oh, oh, wait, wait, oh, there you go. There you go. Like you know, your wellness is through that thing you don't want to do. Right. So thank you for even um, saying that. That's one of the first things that you are going to have to come to terms with when you get a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's funny, my um, my dad, not dad, I'm not throwing you under the bus. I love you so much. Please don't hurt me. I, as a 31 year old, I'm like, can he still ground me? Um, but yeah. <laughs> my dad did not for many years um, stick to an anti-inflammatory diet at all. Um, he was still having beer. He was still smoking cigarettes. He was still, you know, having some Snickers before he goes to bed. And a few years later, unfortunately, he's lost, you know, his optic nerve completely in his left eye. He's legally blind in his left eye. And he's actually been in and out of the hospital this week with a lot of bacterial infections. So yep. um, it is, you know, the proof is in the pudding. You have to put the work in. It's going to suck. Um, but, you know, I'm not saying don't have a cheat day. You can have alternative options for the things that you love. Me, if you tell me, Damien, that Brittany Kiro's a hot MS can never have pizza again, I will find you. I will come to your house. <laughs> you know, but it's about alternatives. Okay, cauliflower crust, make it myself. It doesn't have to be Domino's or Little Caesars. I'm still gonna have my pizza, but I can have it organic and gluten-free and I'll make it work. That's it, literally, make it work. Make it work. That it, make it work. That's a strong point uh, to even end on because that's kind of what this thing is. It's not like a, oh, you are going to die or, oh, you are going to be immediately crippled for the next 40 years. Right. No, it's just a thing that you got to adjust to and yes. you got to do different things now. And this is your life now. So, you know, diet, the exercise. Me personally, I meditate all day, not all day, every day. And for like a half hour, hour. And then I do some Qigong. And then, then I work and then it's a whole bunch of other stuff. And then I come home and I sit and I do my Qigong. I do all of that just so that I can be the ebullient person that you see in front of the camera. Right. So it's yeah, so you're fair. gonna have to adjust your life. Self-care. Self-care is so important. And me, myself, and I know there's billions of people like this who are people pleasers. They want to make everyone happy. And the second, like I am, I am the queen of I'm sorry, or at least was. Apologize about everything. Oh, I'm tired. I'm sorry. Oh, I can't walk that fast. I'm sorry. And I'm like, why am I apologizing? Why are we apologizing? Stop calling me. Sorry. Ooh. Somebody just called me. Um, like, why right. are we constantly apologizing for something that A, we can't control, B, we have no power of, and C, ain't going anywhere? You know, it's like I wrote, I posted this, if you can read it, it says, Don't diss the abled. And I posted this, I think, last week, and so many people loved it. And it was like, okay, when I see somebody disabled, it's like, or in a wheelchair or handicapped, whatever have you. I've never once, even prior to my diagnosis, thought, oh my gosh, life must be really hard for them, for them. Oh my gosh, I feel so sorry for them. It's like, we have to train our minds to say, dude, that's badass. You're a warrior because you have to do everything else that we have to do in life, but with a challenge, with a huge challenge, with obstacles, and you're still making it work. That's so that's empowering. Wild. That's one of the jewels and nuggets that comes along with this. You are finding your own way. And so as you find your own way and become more comfortable in that skin and don't care what anyone else says, you look at other people that maybe might be farther down the road than you. And you it's not a, oh, it's a, whoa, cause yeah. that person is still doing it and still making it happen. And that's something to be respected, revered, and admired. So that that's what I get from it. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm gonna I gotta wrap this up just because I could talk to you forever. 
<laughs> um, you guys out there watching, thank you for coming. Thank you for talking with me. BQ. Thank you so very I much for having me. I love following you. Where we can follow you and find you on the interwebs, please. Yes, yes. So you can find me, um, first of all, at my website, which is www.ahotms.com. Um, on Instagram, a hot MS, Facebook, a hot MS. I tweet, but I'm still figuring out the whole tweet, tweet version of it. <laughs> and then I'm on YouTube as well. So, <laughs> well, this is where she is. Uh, if you cannot find a, a Brit, Brittany, a hot MS, I don't think you should be on the internet right now. We've got to <laughs> give you some more starter class because she out here and we out here. I'm out here, MS Views and News is out here, and we're gonna be doing this more and more. I look down because I need to make sure that I say certain things, like register at our website, register at msviews.org, and get in the loop on what we're doing, on what new things that we're finding in the MS uh, community and research and things like that, and come out to local talk. So if you're in Tallahassee, we might have some in Tallahassee next week with an MS specialist and a neurologist. We are, ooh, this is me doing the same thing you did. And that's my doctor. So this is just to say, MS Views and News is here for you. And for here for you to figure out your way with this thing. Brittany's figured, out, figured it out and still learning. Damien's figured it out and still learning. So you guys began your journey figuring it out and still learning. And know that a resource for you um, is msviewsandnews.org. So sign up. Um, thank you for coming out. Thank you for showing up, BQ. Thank you. Thank you so much, sweetie, for having me. It's been awesome. And I love what you guys do. I have like stocked MS Views and News' information, social media platforms, websites. There's so much valuable information that you guys are offering, which is amazing. Thank you. Like I say, we out here. So make sure you register at the website so you can be out here too with us, son. Anyway, that is the, the thing. Thank you for giving me your time. And I'm going to see you guys on another MS Views now. Thank you. Thank you, Brittany. And see you later. Bye.